So you just mentioned there, like the lessons that you learned working with these people over in the Maldives, uh, with the hotel. Prior to that though, let's talk about the lessons that you learned from bodybuilding. So bodybuilding is a very unique sport. Yeah. And I will never get on stage. I've definitely implemented a lot of principles that bodybuilding teaches, but you know, I think there's definitely a lot of benefit in some of the principles yeah. that come from bodybuilding. And like, that was my base, man. When I first started training 20 years ago, I was like, for 10 years, I was like bodybuilding, trying to get big, trying to get massive. Yeah, that's it. You that's, know? that's it. The first couple of years, bro, and it, it's like, bro but, stuff. But it requires so much discipline, man. It requires yeah. so much discipline. Um, that's it. Yeah, to, to be able to, you know, put yourself through the training required and the, the regime required to get on stage yeah. and show off your Where? physique. Huh? Yeah, and show the work that you've put in, man. It yeah. requires so much discipline. So what are some of the lessons that you took from that journey that then transition and you could apply to the next phase of working with this luxury yeah. hotel? Man, like, I, I think the f what you touched on there, discipline, but I want to, because we've transferred stuff back and this is how it transfers through and it transfers to three things that we've mentioned all in one so like discipline and that that umbrella goes huge but it taught me this discipline and it's got nothing to do with fitness it taught me how to to turn up and over time small things done consistently over time equals results so i'm dyslexic i've got adhd for me to sit there and read is unbelievably hard mm -hmm. what you might have noticed over there is that yoval noah harari is that how you say his name so the guy who oh, yeah, yeah. Sapiens, Homo Deus, and 21, 21 Lessons. lessons. Yeah. I've read all three of them books. I have to sit there for 10, 10, it takes me 45 minutes to read 10 pages. Fuck. I have to sit there, right, 10 pages. All them books I've read, if you look at them, they're about this big. Yeah, they're like uh, 450 pages, 500 pages. I will stop on a word, Google the word, go back to the word, try and read it again, and then go back through it. They took me two and a half years Bodybuilding teaches you discipline. And if, you, if you're if willing to be disciplined, you're willing to sit there or do the thing over time, it'll mount up. And like, that's the main thing it's taught me discipline. Guitars there, I picked up a guitar, I'm left-handed. I'm left-handed, I pick, picked up a guitar a year ago, or opposite way round. I knew that, Why? so. <laughs> discipline, man, I wanted to, I, right, the, you want to the, I wanted to, oh, do you want to be honest, I wanted to proper push myself. Okay. So learning it the opposite way around was harder. So discipline over time. Man, I'm a year in, I can play like 20 songs. Like mm -hmm. I can play more, I, I can play, but it's discipline. That's how it's transferred over into other aspects of life. Mm -hmm. And you can put that into like me, me fitness business, like me online coaching, like yeah. discipline. Which we'll talk about at the moment. That's the main thing though, the, 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 the discipline is, is the, 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 um, the, the ultimate thing I've learned to transfer over. But the, the second thing, and this is something I, I talk about, like you have to turn up to show up. Like you're not gonna feel good all the time. Like you're not gonna be ready to train all the time. If I train when I was, if I train when I was ready to train, man, fuck, I'd never train. Yeah. <laughs> I've got injuries popping out of, out of stuff, and, and it's not necessarily like you can have an injury from anything. But you always something I always say is like turn up to show up. And what, what does that actually mean? You have gotta allow yourself to 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 be in that moment to, to train in that moment and if you don't allow yourself to like show up it, it's it can, i've not explained that the best way let me go back a little bit so an example is maybe you're tired maybe it's thursday friday you've had a busy week up to now you wake up in the morning you had a gym session scheduled at seven o'clock in the morning okay three days in probably not going to be able to get an ultimate hot all-out workout mm -hmm. so then the main thing there is like okay so if you don't turn up are you going to feel guilty is it going to like you're all day is going to be on your mind all day gotcha. yeah but if you're going to go and train all the way out is that going to be realistic no but if you turn up you allow yourself to show up and 10 minutes in like how many times have you turned up to a workout and been like for fuck's sake man i'm hitting x y and z and then got 10 into it and you go yeah that was all right man. yeah like the only workout you never regret the workout you've just done you only regret a workout if you get injured in it that's that's the, mm -hmm. the main thing it's finding that balance and turning up you don't and not every workout has to be 100 percent. that's what this means like turning up can just be like turning up and then you show up and then you do 10 minutes of stretching it wasn't a day you put it in the bank and you go the next day yeah 100 percent, man just to tie into that as well because people that have been listening or following the podcast for a while will know that i'm, I'm building out phase two of my business and um something that i coach is like a modular style training 
So, you know, I'll have a strength component, I'll have a stabi stability component, I'll have like skill development, I'll have like a speed component, I'll have like a power component, I'll have a conditioning component, mobility, etc. So, what I teach my clients is go to the gym, it's scheduled in, but if you get in and you're supposed to be hitting a strength based session today and that takes you, you know, that takes you an hour to get through the warm up to get through all the exercises, etc. You roll in, you start doing your um, targeted warm up for that session and you're not feeling it, choose something else, yeah, exactly. right? Now you've got your movement prep and your corrective exercise. Now you've got some stability and mobility based work. Mm. Maybe you do like a Tabata session on a bike, right? But you spend 30, 40, 50 minutes like mobilizing the body, getting stretching, you know, breathing, doing all this other stuff that's beneficial and then, all right, sweet, I'm gonna have a little burnout here because I feel good. I still wanna get a little bit of work done. So I think that's an important thing is being able to adjust your session. Like I've walked into the gym and gone, all right, I've, I'm gonna do some Olympic lifting today. I'm gonna to go heavy. I'm working on that strength speed. So I'm gonna, you know, build up to doubles at, you know, 90, 95% of my max. And going through the warm up, I'll do my mobility work 10 minutes in, I'm like, oh, I'm still feeling a little bit tight here. Once I mobilize one area, I move somewhere else, oh, I'm feeling tight here, oh, I'll move somewhere else, I'm feeling tight here, work on that. And I've like done 40 minutes of mobility work and then gone, cool, I'm not feeling it today, I'm gonna do a little bit of conditioning, yeah. you know, a little body weight circuit for 10 minutes, sweet, walk out the gym, come back in the next day, guess what, now I'm feeling good, man. Yeah. I've just focused on recovery, I've got my body moving properly, I haven't stuck to the training program, but I've still got in and got something done. So for me, that's what that means. As as you said, it's like, what do you say? Turn up. You to, yeah, yeah. You, you have to, to show up. You have to turn up to show up. Yeah. yeah. Like, and yeah, allowing yourself that option. And if you're allowing yourself the option, you've got A or B, and not just the one. Yes. And and if you allow yourself the option, and you you turn up, and you show up, and it's not to be, and it's not to be. But if you turn up and you show up, and you get ten minutes in. 20 minutes in, you enjoyed it, then guess what? Like you're gonna feel so much better about you've just, it. You've just won. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And, and it, it's always stacking the odds in your favor to give your chance the best, to give yourself the best chance of success. Mm -hmm. and, and like that's why, why when I'm preaching online stuff, I'm always saying like 80, 20, give yourself the best option, give yourself that best chance. Mm -hmm. And if, if you don't give yourself the option, then you're basically closing the door that, that could be opened into another way because Again, like, how many times, we can just touch on it in, on the opposite way, but how many times have you turned up to a workout, felt tired, felt like you're going to go through it, but then it's a bit of a season best or a personal best? Yeah. Like, that's the other end of that scale, and, and, and I've done it leading up to bodybuilding shows, man. Like, I would, and my always thing was just, like, strap it up and get on with it. It's like, just all that means is just, like, take a deep breath, brace, and just get through it. And, it's like, and that's, that's that discipline coming in as well. To, it's like, if you shy away from, you know, doing things when you don't feel like it, like that becomes a habit. Yeah. And the more you let that stuff slide and the more you don't discipline yourself to do those difficult things, when you don't feel like it, like the more you accept that, you accept that standard. Yeah, right? So we've got to train ourselves to be disciplined, to show up, to turn up yeah. and then adjust the session to, and sometimes you, you right, I'm not feeling it, but I'm gonna fucking put myself through this difficult session, knowing that I'm gonna feel a sense of achievement once I've finished it. Yeah, I think mean, what you what you've mentioned again. This is another little gem from you, Jay. Um, how you do anything and how is how you do any everything, and what mm -hmm. you practice becomes permanent. They're the same thing in a different way. Yeah. Both from you again. Both both I, I absolutely love it. And it's, it's like you've just said something right there, Cobbs. It's like you hold you to a standard, and like that standard is is how you do everything and yeah. like I, I'm a huge advocate of that and that does stuff at the, at the start which is like it, I think use your class as an example I love your class man like the structure That's of it everything that you've just said there is baked in when we're doing strength conditioning when we're doing aerobic when we're doing power based stuff like it's all specific and that's I went for a few times, seen it through, and then that's how we developed a bit more of a relationship because mm -hmm. I'm nerding out on it. Like people are doing it, I'm taking photos and going home and, and, and writing it down and being like, yeah. "So this is there and, and whatever." But like, how you how you do gonna do how you do all that's it how how you set it all up is like it's it's a pleasure to see because I go there and 
I know what it's like to t- set up a class. I've done that. I've done multiplications. It's hard, man. And the depth that you're going into it, and uh, and the explanations is just something I I genuinely admire, man. Yeah, like, thanks, bro. Like from from a from like a coach to a coach's perspective, like it's it's so good to be a part of, like to to see, and also like that's one thing. But I have went into your class with an open mind, implemented some of the stuff that you've done. And we've stick, we, we've spoke about it, man. Like my runs went skyrocketing quicker. I knocked like in like three months, I think I knocked like three minutes off of five k, and in, in like seven eight months, it was like five minutes off of five k. But since we implemented your course, oh man, the difference in like me agility when I was doing boxing, I could mm-hmm. pl- I played football at a decent standard when I was a kid. I never played football for go many years. Started sort of dropped it, picked up your class, went back to it. Oh, man, like lateral the carryover. Oh, man, the, the, the transferable skills, man, how that all that comes in. It just, to me, seeing like how you can put like the structure of your class and seeing how that all comes together because. It's not just the structure of the day, it's the structure of the week. Yeah, that's it. And that's it's it. the structure of the month. Yeah. That, yeah. When I've done that, then it's like, like, that, that's like your lesson, and then there's like the class. Yeah. <laughs> and it, what you said is perfect, man. It's like, this is a three week phase. Like, do this in three weeks. Yeah. So, remember one of them. It was just like an exercise on each one where I was like, well, I'm going to see if I can get tangible measurements to mm-hmm. see if they increase. And then like all that increased and then my speed increased. So then a oh, man like me kicks on me on, on Muay Thai, me lifts everything aesthetically a lot better. Like, yeah. And then again, it all transfers in. Improved functionality, functionality, improved functionality. performance, improved aesthetics. Yeah. yeah. A breath of fresh air for, for me when I discovered your class. Genuine breath of fresh air, yeah. man. I enjoyed it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.